Today we're going to do an experiment and we are going to work with hydrochloric acid and sodium thiosulfate. And the way this experiment goes is that when you combine the two together, you actually uh, make a precipitation reaction. You're going to make solid sulfur. And we often use this as a, uh, a way of examining the influences of temperature, concentration or agitation we basically uh, can see whether the reaction's happening faster or, or slower uh, with those factors by being able to see how quickly the uh, solution goes cloudy, uh, particularly how long until you can no longer see through it. So how we achieve this is that we often have like a marking. So here I've got a piece of card with a bit of blue tack. So I could sticky tape it, I could stick it to behind the, the test tube here. Often this one's done when you view from above and as it starts to get cloudy uh, you would, uh, and you have your X mark underneath, you would view from above and you just basically time how long until you can no longer see the mark. Uh, for us, because of the camera, I can't seem to get it from above like the traditional method. Uh, we've just modified this experiment slightly by putting it side on. So I'm going to try and stick it there. And I'll get you a close up in a moment. But the theory goes is that we'll get a precipitate, it'll start to build up and build up and build up until we can no longer see through it and we'll take a time measurement. We are going to try and see the influence of increasing the concentration of sodium thiosulfate and see how that makes this thing go quicker or slower. Okay, so we're just gonna have a quick uh, demonstration of what the reaction looks like before we proceed uh, to use the little X mark there. So I'm just going to add the two reagents together. We've currently got the hydrochloric acid in there and now I'm going to add a dilute sample of sodium thiosulfate and we should start to see a reaction starting. Okay, so now the solution has gone quite opaque um, and we might just finish this one here for the moment being, but you can start to see that we do build up that amount of sulfur uh, as a uh, you know, colloid. So now we're going to run this experiment a few times um, uh, at different concentrations and we'll use a stopwatch. I'm not sure if I'll have it um, visible on the screen. I might just have it off camera just to keep things nice and simple. But uh, maybe I'll put these side by side so you can see them all playing out side by side on the video all at once. And then we can look at some graphs later on. So I hope that uh, helps you to sort of get a visual of that, that experiment there and you could uh, even try at home trying to measure the uh, reaction time. Um, but uh, I thought I'd just close with uh, a bit of an extra detail about why this experiment works for measuring the effect of concentration. Even though if I increase the concentration of the, the reactants, you would imagine that I would therefore produce more product and you might think that might throw off our results. That's not necessarily true, is because we are measuring time, uh, we're measuring the time it takes to make enough product to obscure the X symbol. That means that even if I have lots and lots of um, uh, uh, chemical reactants to work with, I'm only measuring it until we have the exact same amount of 
reactant, uh, sorry, product that it takes to obscure. So we can compare them as apples to apples because we're only measuring it um, part way until we can obscure this X. So every time I do this, I'm actually measuring the same amount of products being produced. If I didn't have this little X symbol, and then I just waited for it to completely finish, then that would be not fair. We would obviously have very different amounts of product. But because we have the X there, uh, we are measuring the same amount every time. And um, I would suggest to you, uh, folks at home, is to uh, maybe make a table of results and um, give it a go to um, make a graph. You can make a graph of concentration versus time, which should be very basic. You should get an interesting curve out of that one. Or you could even convert the values into a measurement of rate, so one over time, and then make another graph and see what you get.